This is genetics not a problem, and today's not a problem is statistical analysis. We're going to do chi-square and p-values. A group of researchers studying turtles have isolated an autosomal mutation that confers ninja-like reflexes just prior to adulthood. This mutation is recessive to the normal slow allele. So whenever I see that, I'm going to write down uh, my mutation, let's call it nin for ninja, and it's recessive to the normal allele. In this case, it's uh, slow, um, and whenever I see a, a normal or wild type allele, I'll just, just give it a plus for shorthand. Uh, the cross is a a homozygous slow turtle, so let's call it plus plus, is mated to a homozygous ninja, call it nin nin, and then we're told that the F1 are interbred. So the F1, as you know, are going to be ninja over plus, and if those guys are interbred, then what you're going to expect in the F2 from our standard monohybrid Mendelian with simple dominance is you're going to have a 3 to 1 of wild type to ninja. So let's go to 3 to 1, slow to ninja, okay, because we were told before that the slow was dominant. Okay, so the, the issue with this one is um, we don't have an ex exact 3 to 1 in our progeny. What we've been told is among the F2, you actually have a 25 slow, and you've got a 15 ninja for a total of 40 animals. So if we're going to do a chi-square, um, we're going to ask, is, is this different from a 3 to 1, or could this, have, could this have really happened just by chance, by random variation? Um, and you know that this can happen sometimes, right? If you, if you flip a coin, you know, only 40 times, you might not get exactly 20-20, even though your expected really is, is 20 to 20. So let's just see. If we had expected a 3 to 1, um, out of 40 animals, we would need to have 30 and 10. So this is very important in chi-square is that you keep the total the exact same between your observed and expected categories. And then we're just going to apply this formula, this chi-square formula, which is observed minus expected. You're going to square that, and then you're going to put that over expected. So in the case of, of this, uh, observed minus expected is 5, so we're going to square that 25 over the expected of 30. Uh, again, Observed minus expected here is going to be 5. We're going to square that, and we're going to put it over expected, which is 10. Um, that's going to give us about 0.8. That's going to give us about 2.5, or exactly 2.5. And in the end, our total chi-square, which is actually the, the sum of these things, is going to be 3.3. Uh, uh, so then uh, we're going to look on the chi-square table down here, and the only other thing we need to know is how many degrees of freedom we have. Um, degrees of freedom is basically one fewer than the two categories, or the number of categories that you're looking at. And here we're looking at only two categories that are relevant to our analysis. We're, we're trying to figure out whether um, the ratio of slow to ninja is, is different. Um, and since there's only two outcomes, there's really only one degree of freedom. Uh, in Another way of thinking about it is if, if you had altered one of your categories, say you had manipulated the number of slow, um, how many other categories would have had to change because of that? Okay, so if we were, if we were, if we were flipping a coin, there's either heads or tails, and um, if your number of heads goes up, your number of tails has to go down because those are related categories. Okay, so in the case of flipping a coin, there's two categories. The degrees of freedom is only one. And that's the same here. Two categories, the degrees of freedom is one. So we're going to look in our degrees of freedom one line. We're going to look all the way down until we see a th something that looks like a 3.3. We're coming closer, we're coming closer. And it would be somewhere in here. So the answer to this question is, what is your p-value? It is between 0 0.1 and, oopsies, and 0 0.05. OK, so that's. That's the answer. It's greater than 0 0.05. So um, no, now, say we have a p-value. Um, and let's say in this case our p-value was something like 0.15. We had done uh, an experiment in this case. I'm a researcher, and I've done uh, a, an experiment using a drug that might enhance performance on genetics exams. So I had a group of 50 experimental subjects that got the drug, um, but of course I had to have a control group that, that didn't get the drug. And um, I gave them a genetics exam, 
And let's say I did observe a difference between the two groups. I observed a, a higher exam average in the experimental group. Okay, and let's say they had an average of 85% instead of 80. Um, so I do a statistical analysis, and in the end, let's say I get a p-value of 0 0.15. Given that information, which of the following statements is the most true? Um, and some people have a really hard time with this because there's a lot of ways of, of phrasing that, but um, if, you, if you really understand what it is, then the phrasing won't, won't get you down. And so what, what it really means when you have a p-value of 0.15, it means even if there hadn't been any difference between your groups at all, um, in 15% of the cases, you'd st still see a difference at least as large as the one that you saw. Okay, so even if you hadn't treated um, one of the experimental groups and you were actually looking at two control groups, right, they aren't always going to have the exact same exam average. There's always going to be some variation. Um, and statistics tells us about that variation. Um, and so what the real answer is, is this one at the bottom. It says the difference that you observe would arise in 15% of cases when you're just comparing groups that don't that don't differ in any real way. Okay, if you just had two control groups of 50 people in it, um, in 15 percent of the cases you would see um, at least a large of, of a difference as, that, as the one that you observed. Okay, now what it can't tell us, what a p-value can't tell us is what is actually happening. Okay, it can only tell us about the probability of something happening. So it, whenever you see something like this, the difference you observed definitely arose by chance. Your drug definitely has no effect on exam performance. That's that's never <laughs> that's never something that a p-value can directly tell you. Okay, same with the second one. The drug is effective in only 85% of the subjects. Um, again, p-values can't tell you exactly what's going on, and it certainly can't tell you detailed information like that. Uh, the next one says, if you sample 300 students' um, subjects instead of 100, okay, so b before you had 50 plus 50, so you had 100 subjects, let's say you, uh, you tripled the size of your study, so now you have 300 subjects. Let's say the magnitude of the difference stayed the same. That is, one group got 85% average, the other group got an 80% average. Um, now it says here the new p-value would be higher but that's the exact opposite of what would happen, okay? As you increase your sample size, the p-value is going to keep getting lower and lower, provided that the magnitude of the difference that you see stays the same, okay? So in the end, this, this is the right way, okay? So I hope that that gives you some help.